In this lecture, we are going to talk about recursive formulas and closed formulas, which we can use to describe sequences of numbers. We will also learn about summation notation and how to evaluate summations. So first, we'll begin by analyzing a sequence of numbers in order to find the next number in the sequence. Then we'll talk about recursive formulas and closed formulas, which can be used to describe these sequences of numbers. Then we'll find a sequence of numbers from a formula, and then we'll work the other way around where we find a formula given a sequence of numbers. And finally, we will work with summations and how to evaluate sums. So one day you are scrolling down your Facebook feed and you see one of these lame posts posted by some acquaintance. Not to be outdone by Linda. You post the answer smugly. 15. Duh. But how do we know it's 15? In this case, it seems almost obvious, so we don't really think about the steps we use to get to the answer. But can we generalize the approach that we take so that we can solve this for other sequences of numbers? Let's investigate how we do this, so we can find the pattern between other sequences of numbers. Let's start with these sequences. These are easy. Pattern is simple addition between each item in the sequence, and the number being added stays the same each time. Take a moment and see if you can figure out the pattern for each of these. So with these sets of numbers, we can look at these sequences and figure out the pattern without much inspection. We could probably do it entirely in our heads. How about these sequences? These are a little harder. We're still dealing with addition, but the difference between each number in the sequence changes. However, the change in the difference between each number is also a pattern. Try to find the pattern before we continue. What is the next number in each sequence? So for these sequences, solving it might take a little bit more investigation into the differences between each number, and then seeing the pattern that arises in the actual differences themselves. And these two are a little bit harder still. With the top sequence here, we're not adding between each number, but instead we're multiplying. For the bottom one, we're adding by a different amount each time, by 2 to the n, with n changing each term. Can you figure out the pattern? So if addition isn't working out, sometimes we have to think in terms of multiplication or even exponents. If the numbers aren't increasing linearly, we are probably dealing with some form of multiplication. I created these number sequences by writing simple programs to generate them for me. So if you know some programming, you can generate number sequences in the code with a simple for loop. Notice how the number itself might be the only thing to increase, or we could increase the increment each time, or while this is a computer science class, this is not a class about programming, but I thought it would be good to show you some of the code that you can use to apply this. But really with these number sequences, we're more interested in how we can represent them with formulas, and we'll be using either recursive formulas or closed formulas. Let's begin by defining what these two formulas are. According to the Wikipedia page on recursive formulas, or otherwise known as recurrence relations, in mathematics, a recurrence relation is an equation that recursively defines a sequence of values. Once one or more initial terms are given, each further term of the sequence is defined as a function of the preceding terms. So in other words, with a recursive formula, we must first specify the value of the first term, which we write as a sub 1, and we also specify the value at a sub n, which references the value at a sub n minus 1. So we can use the formula for a sub n to find the value of any other number after a sub 1. So we could use a sub 2, which references a sub 1, a sub 3, which references a sub 2, and so on. So as an example, here's one recursive formula. a sub 1 is 2, so the very first term is 2. And then for all terms after it, we define a sub n equals the previous term, a sub n minus 1, plus 2. So in order to come up with the sequence of numbers, we start with the very first term, which is already given to us. And for the second term, a sub 2, 
we use the formula given. a sub 2 is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 2. So in other words, we take the value of a sub 1 and plug it in. So a sub 2 is 2 plus 2, or 4. And we continue along the same lines. a sub 3 is going to be the previous value, plus 2. So it is 4 plus 2, or 6. And we can continue on to generate as many terms of the sequence as we would like. So this one would go 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. Now let's look at a closed formula. A closed formula for a sequence is a formula where each term is described only in relation to its position in the list. For this one, we won't have a starting term. We'll just have a sub n equals some formula, and n will be used to calculate the value. In this case, whatever the value of n is, whether it's 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., that's the position of the term in the sequence, or otherwise known as its index. So a simple closed formula is a sub n equals 2 times n. So for the first term, a sub 1 is 2 times 1, so it is equal to 2. a sub 2 is 2 times 2, so it is equal to 4. a sub 3 is 2 times 3, so it is 6. And we can continue to find any amount of terms. So to represent 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, we can use both a recursive formula and a closed formula. Let's try it out. We will practice by finding a sequence of numbers from a given equation. For the given formula, find the first five elements of the sequence. So with this recursive formula, a sub 1 is 1, and a sub n is a sub n minus 1 plus 3 or the previous term, plus 3. Find the first five terms. You should have gotten the sequence of numbers 1, 4, 7, 10, and 13. And here is how you would have calculated these. Okay, let's do another. With a sub 1 equals 1, and a sub n equals 2 times the previous term, Find the first five elements of the sequence. You should have ended up with 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, and this is how you would have calculated it. And finally, we'll try with multiplication and addition. So find the first five sequences when we have the first term is 3, and every term after that is 3 times the previous term plus 1. You should have gotten the sequence 3, 10, 31, 94, and 283, and this is how you would calculate it. Okay, now let's practice with a closed formula. Find the first five elements of a sequence, given the closed formula a sub n is equal to 3 times n. The result will be 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15, and you would calculate it this way. Alright, now try to find the first five elements of the sequence given by a sub n equals 2n plus 1. For this one, we're counting it by 2s, but we've also offset it by 1. So instead of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, we have 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Okay, one more practice for now. Find the first five elements of the sequence given by this closed formula. So a sub n is equal to 2 to the n plus 1. If you're familiar with powers of 2, you might recognize 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. But in this case, we've also offset it by 1, so we have 3, 5, 9, 17, and 33. Okay, so hopefully you understand how these formulas work now. The challenging part is going in the opposite direction. Let's look at sequences of numbers and finding the formulas for those sequences. We again have to investigate the differences between each of the terms and figure out what the pattern is, and then we have to figure out how we can express that mathematically. So let's go back to these number sequences that we were looking at before. How do we turn these into formulas? 
Let's look at this sequence again. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Let's come up with the closed formula, even though we've looked at this before. Remember that with the closed formula, the term is defined by its position in the sequence. So a good way to start is to write out each number in the sequence with whatever its position is. So a sub 1 is 2, a sub 2 is 4, a sub 3 is 6, a sub 4 is 8, a sub 5 is 10, and a sub 6 is 12. It should be pretty obvious what the formula should be at this point. For each of these, if we multiply the index by 2, we get the term. So for a sub 1, if we multiply 2 times 1, we get 2, which is the first term. And for a sub 6, we do 2 times 6, and that gives us 12, the last term in our sequence. Therefore, our closed formula is a sub n equals 2 times n. Sometimes seeing the pattern can take a bit more analysis. So let's look at the sequence 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17. We've already looked at these, and between each term, there's a difference of 3. Let's also write out each term with its index. So a sub 1 is 2, a sub 2 is 5, and so on until a sub 6 is 17. With this sequence, we know that there's a difference of 3 between each term, but it isn't exactly 3, 6, 9, 12, etc. We can use this as a starting point and then figure out what we offset the sequence by. So let's start with 3, 6, 9, and 12. We know this is 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on. So a sub 1 should be 2. If we start off with 3 times 1, what do we offset it by to get the actual term 2? Well, we subtract 1. a sub 2 is 5, so if we think about 3 times 2 equals 6, we again subtract 1 in order to get 5. So we can start off thinking of these as 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on, and recognize that we're just subtracting 1 from each term to get our final value in the sequence. So the closed formula for this sequence, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, would be a sub 1 equals 3 times n minus 1. If we were writing it out as a recursive formula, it would actually be quite a bit easier. To come up with the recursive formula, we only need to identify the first term, which is easy, it's already given to us, and we already know that there's a difference of 3 between each term, so we define the a sub n as the previous term plus 3. So the recursive formula is a sub 1 is 2, and a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 3. Alright, and let's look at some sequences that don't just increase by the same amount each time. Again, when solving for either formula, first write out all the terms with their positions in the sequence. For recursive, how does each term relate to the previous one? Here we can see that the difference increases each time. Even with a recursive formula, we can still use n, the index, as part of the formula as well. So we could write the recursive formula as a sub 1 equals 2, and a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus n minus 1. And when dealing with something that's been multiplied each time, again we start by writing out the values with their indexes. In this case, a sub 1 is 1, and we can see that a sub n is the current index n times the previous term, a sub n minus 1. Even if you can find a pattern for a sequence of numbers, it is not always practical to find the closed formula, but usually finding the recursive formula is much easier. Time for another practice problem. Find the closed formula and the recursive formula for the following sequence of numbers. 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. You should end up with the closed formula a sub n equals 2n plus 3. And you should get a recursive formula of a sub 1 equals 5 and a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 2. Now that we understand how to get elements of a sequence from a closed formula, we can use this knowledge to evaluate sums. 
If you're familiar with programming, sums are basically like building a for loop from 1 to some value n, and summing all the elements in the sequence step by step. The general form of a sum looks like this. Below the sigma is our index variable at the starting value, which is usually 1, and above the sigma is the ending value. n will be replaced by some other integer. In the general form, we have a sub k to the right of the sigma, but in an actual sum, this would be replaced by some sort of closed formula. For each index k, we would take whatever the value of the sequence is at that position, k, and sum it to the running total. So if we want to evaluate a sum, such as the sum from k equals 1 to 5 of 2k plus 1, we need to find the terms a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5 to find the sum. Then the result will be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4 plus a sub 5. So in this case, we use the closed formula a sub k equals 2k plus 1 to find our different elements. We have a sub 1 is 2 times 1 plus 1 equals 3. a sub 2 is 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 5. a sub 3 is 2 times 3 plus 1 equals 7. And then a sub 4 is 9, and a sub 5 is 11. So we add all of these terms together. So when we add together 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11, our result should be 35, and that's the result of the sum from k equals 1 to 5 of 2k plus 1. We could also write a program to evaluate a sum with a for loop. I just start out by declaring a start, an end, and a sum variable. I start sum at 0, and then we iterate from k equals the starting value to k equals the ending value, and we increment k by 1 each time. Then we add 2k plus 1 onto sum each time, and we'll get the result. Alright, so sums are pretty easy. Try to practice by evaluating the following sum. The sum from k equals 1 to 5 of 2 to the k. You should end up with 2 to the 1st, plus 2 to the 2nd, plus 2 to the 3rd, plus 2 to the 4th, plus 2 to the 5th, which is 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32, and that all sums to 62. Maybe sometime on the job, you'll have to derive a formula given some data set of numbers. Or maybe not. Either way, the practice of analyzing data and coming up with a solution is, in general, a useful skill to have. The rest of this chapter of our book relates more to propositional logic, items that evaluate to true or false, kind of like if statements. So if you're not feeling too enthusiastic about these sequences, don't worry. Finding formulas for sequences is only in this part. Thank you.